and tie that in. Uh, this is a case study that I put in the article in the journal of a uh, professional baseball player. Came to me last November. Uh, their season was over. He started off the first half of the season leading, leading his uh, division, smashing. He had a three, 345 batting average, crushing it. The batting coach for the big leagues comes down, and in, in the world of professional baseball, you only keep your job if you can prove that they need to keep, that they need you. So he came and took the, the number one minor league guy this organization, tweaked his batting stance, tweaked how he was holding it, and he said, all the big league guys give a little pop back here, right? And so you need to do that too, and that's not what he did. As soon as he did it, his batting average dropped below 200 for the second half of the season, and then he couldn't get out, he couldn't break the mold. And so we met in November, and this was his pattern of those 10 attributes. Um, you know, we had team player was great, and he had a couple other really good ones. Self-confidence was here. Um, mental toughness was here. These aren't really, really great scores. Most of the athletes, the pro athletes we work with, have really high, high blues, where this would be right here, or greens. And he was really, really struggling. So, um, you know, after 12 weeks of, and I provided the case study again in the journal, of providing him a sound uh, physical training regimen, but along with the mental side too. So everything we do has a purpose, has a reason. We're always mindful in the way we train, um, and we're always very aware, all right? So we put all those pieces together um, and um, put him in a controlled environment because in February, when he goes to spring training, he's not in a controlled environment anymore. He's right back into chaos, and you don't know what's happening the next day. You get in the batting cage, and you go. So we kind of we work through those pieces. And so, you know, as a screen, you can do a post-test, too. It provides a very quick, easy metric, not necessarily a diagnostic metric, but this is where he had when he left after 12 weeks. Uh, and, and that was great. And he could go through very specifically and identify and say exactly why um, he had those changes, without a doubt, why he was more focused, more self-confidence, how he found his swing, getting into a daily ritual, make daily habits. Um, well, I don't do a whole lot of self-affirmation. I probably should. <laughs> um, even personally, I should probably do that. Uh, but the way that we chose to drive our daily decisions and relate that to execution of performance, we ended up having something that worked quite well. Um, and and I, I probably wish I could have gone back and, and, um, and we had the data so we could pull up his full profile, we've got that available. But uh, um, the point of this particular case study with him, and, and I probably have three, four, five hundred just like this, of the same way. And so coaches like that. They like to know that, okay, now he's coming in at this level, not the level prior, and, and that's a good thing, but tell me as a coach, what do I do to, to continue this? Right? And that's really the application of what we do to make it resonate within the target market, whether it's leadership, hospitality, nursing, dental, in my case, it's for sport, and that's where we need that, that subject area expert to be able to provide that. The next steps in terms of a screen, you know, are now then to take it, and this is what we're working through now, is to build out a screen for, and we've got, we've got it, we're just now building out the platform, um, tennis and golf, um, we've got one for swimming, we've got one for racing, those are all that I work with USA Swimming. I work with Australian Institute of Sport with other Olympic programs. So we're making targeted team-specific profiles that then um, you know resonate with an athlete, and that way they can we can get a gauge ongoing um, through their process, off-season, pre-season, post-season, three times a year is pretty much what we're suggesting through that process. Unless we get a pitcher who's like in the slumps, right? And, um, which is. Uh, you know, well, the Giants, I guess, did okay last night, according to, mm -hmm. to Dave. So we'll see if they can continue that process. Um, so that's a little bit about uh, what we're calling an Axios screen in the Ready to Play profile. Just wanted the opportunity, thank you, to introduce it. You know, something that's kind of new and novel, I know, for the Hartman Institute and, and, and getting away from the HVP. But um, it's uh, very um, receptive when you go into a professional team owner, agent manager. Um, and an athlete themselves, and their traditional profiling methods are personality, regardless of whether it's HVP or Exologically anyway, 
In the world of baseball, here's a typical one that every one of my pro baseball players have taken at some point. And I've worked with nine different pro baseball teams that send me guys every, every year. Um, you come to a yellow light. Do you typically A, run it, or B, stop? Right. Are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> That's the very first question on their, on their mental profile. That can be taken a lot of ways, but if I'm going to play for Dave, I better say A, run it, even if I believe in B, stop. If I'm going to play, you know, Beer's like, heck yeah. <laughs> um, if I'm going to play for Randy, I'm probably going to say I need to, need to stop. Not you better, you better stop. Yeah, see? <laughs> even though I've got five tickets. So, but, you know, it's um, is, am I knocking that? No. Is there a place for that? Yes. By all means. And so this is just another component to add to that um, uh, an information that that gives them from a personality and behavior. This, and everybody here knows that, right? Um, so that's just kind of one of the neat things to be on the, the front end of applying this science even to the world of sport as we continue to evolve and hopefully make a guy like Robert Hartman proud and put a smile on his face. So. Um, yeah, we'll wrap it up. I think that about the line that, I think that some athletes didn't want to bother to take the profile. Am I correct? Um, that said, some athletes, when they got three out of my 44, when they just sat down and they saw the statements that had nothing to do with sport, no, they just they did not want to deal so with it. This, this is business of meaning, isn't it? So, um, I guess what you're saying is you've got it through the set of instruction set. You need to give the profile meaning. Yes. So that that would deliver the meaning, wouldn't it? So they would endure the ranking. That's a great point. That's a great point. You know, many athletes take, assume, when they're taking the profile, it's strictly for job selection or whether they're going to keep them or not. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that are for job selection or hiring, um, you know, they will, more times than not, not even read the instructions, they just go straight to the statements. Um, and then they backtrack and go to the instructions. And so that's a really good point in terms of what's the meaning and the purpose well, of that. In my business is called face validity. Yes. And, yeah. and, and what you're really that. saying is we, we have to design items that have face validity for our intended uh, subjects. Yes. And that uh, face of the the selection of the items would confer meaning, mm -hmm. and then your instruction set on what to do mm -hmm. would also confer meaning. Mm -hmm. exactly. So we're up against this distinction between values and meaning. Right. That's another another concept. And it's if you want to get at certain information, it's a good idea to change the instructions and hone in on exactly what you're trying to capture, which we did with the ready to play, Jeremy, didn't we? We change the instructions to focus their minds right. on exactly why we wanted them to rank things a certain way. And by the way, so we, got, we, we got some feedback. of that from Dr. Pomeroy saying right. we had to show them first that life is better than and death. death. Yes. Basic things yep. that would point them in the direction of what we mean by ranking it from best to worst. And we yeah. have examples in there now that are very <coughs> simple so that they can get right into the mode of doing it properly instead of coming up with a row that's terrible. I think this was an interesting study. Uh, we listened to uh, a presentation by Pat Summit. I think everyone knows Pat Summit. Oh, sure. sure. And she uses the PI, which is a good on there. But I thought this was pretty interesting from the standpoint, okay, you want to know a lot about that yeah. athlete, but some of the college's faces, can I get that kid through school? Because after you know, school, I don't know what percentage is making professionals. 26%, I mean, this is to me a, a crazy statistic, but uh, it shows the level of pressure and burnout from high school athletes as they uh, make, the, make the jump to collegiate sport. And it certainly holds true with all the profiles we've run from the sport athletes that I've worked with and, and that we reviewed, 26% of scholarship freshman athletes um, quit before the end of their freshman year. Oh. 26, we're not very full. Quit because the pressure and burnout, I can't handle it. You know, so um, that's an important piece to know. Do you have any HVP uh, data on that population of burnouts? Um, I, when you say HVP, I, I, I 
The data we've taken from our profiles I have of players who have burned out. Yes, you do have data on that. Yeah. In other words, I mean, they're athletes who I've worked with who we profiled three years ago and they quit now. Does anything, is there a signal, Juris? Does anything stand out in that burnout group? Um, the overvaluing in the DIM S1 of the composition, right? I mean, they overvalue, think about it, they overvalue authority. They're going to do what the coach says. We do what mom and dad want them because they know that they're important. Even if they don't right? And if and and the evaluation tends to be high, mm -hmm. that would suggest they tend to live there. They, 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 they sit probably, down there, they live it, and it's they're obsessed about it. That's a strong word. And that would probably be associated and, with an evaluation. And that just paves the way to burnout right there. Mm -hmm. yes. Overvaluation has consequences, mm -hmm. psychological consequences. Mm -hmm. I like it. I feel secure there. Yes. I want to stay there. Right. And, right. and boom, burnout. Well, Jeremy. And, 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 but it's, it's not just that isolation. So the integrated pattern of that is overvaluation in the uh, DIM S1, undervaluation in, in the other one. So, and no, extrinsic. Oh, this, yeah, this, this is a profile that you're talking about. So you have data on more than one point. Oh, yes. <laughs> but the ones that stick with it are not going to undervalue the systemic transposition. No. Nope. Jeremy, could you go over, uh, you discussed with me the, the process of athlete and parent and preparing the, the athlete for the path or the path for yeah, the that was, Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the principles I was in New York there mentioned for a book coming out called <clears throat> Parent Your Best, How to Beat the Sports Parent Trap. And so it's, if it's all about you, you're not a parent. <laughs> So it's all my work with high school athletes, training them physically, but then all the work we've done mentally, you know, using the science and how we work through. And one of the principles comes in there from the parent and the child lead to burnout. Are you, you know, are you preparing the path for the child or the child for the path? And so from the parents end, they're preparing the path for the child, getting the best camps, all the combines, they make sure that they're in the best combine that summer. Um, and then with the child's overvaluation <coughs> systemically. Um, and the parents rewarding it. And the parents rewarding that because that's their feeding their label. That's how they label themselves in, in their internal identity, their DMS2. Um, and you buy that into in the DEM E1 <coughs> scores, the worldview extrinsic, they're all undervalued by the, by the, by the athlete. We got this split, right? So I'm, um, uh, you know, it's I'm just gonna follow mom and dad because I know that, you know, they're gonna take care of me, right? I, I can make a mistake, I can, I'm willing to risk, I'm willing to risk something I shouldn't be doing because I'm gonna be able to manage the outcome, or mom and dad are gonna manage the outcome for me at that point. But Very then good. all of a sudden you get into college, mm -hmm. mom and dad aren't there. Right, and you're living it, and it's a full-time job as an athlete. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> the burnout is physical. Um, no, it's the pressure mentally. It's their bodies can take it. Their bodies are, are great. In fact, the jump, the biggest shock physically is the volume of work from a senior in high school to freshman in college. I mean, literally, the volume is two, three, four hundred percent. Um, you talking about school work. Right. Uh, no, no, no physical preparation. Physical run. preparation. Great, great. Sorry for that lack of clarification. So the burnout is mental. It's just that, it's that pressure where I am solely valued on my performance. That's it. And that, that's in my social, um, social group with my teammates, my peers. That's tied in from that systemic to that extrinsic um, to my mom and dad, to my uncle. Right? Side note, it, over in Dallas, in the study for use steroids, they looked at mom, dad, teacher, coach, assi and assistant coach, and relatives. Guess who the number one provider for steroids for kids under 12 was? Uncle. 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 <laughs> yeah, right? If feeding that in from, again, I'm valued on my performance even with my relatives. And, you know, look at that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Got it. Uh, uh, NFL take it. He writes, viciously hurting a teammate at number four. Ooh. <laughs> right? And he's like, well, okay, <laughs> what's going on with you know? Um, no. And, and, you know, but that's, you know, you come back and you say, all right, if, and I'm not, again, we're just talking about face validity here, right? Would he have ranked, and I'm speculating here, but would he have ranked 
Um, number 18 on the HVP is number four for him. So <laughs> never. Yeah. That's like that. If you like, it's going to be um, the